What's the deal? What are we sitting here for, Hunter? All right. All right. We're going to talk about something that has been a topic of discussion for about a week now, maybe a little bit longer. But I got a good guess. What do you think about forward facing sonar in elite events? So, from my perspective, I don't have a way to have an opinion. I don't have a choice. Nothing like that. When we go to certain tournaments, you just have to use it. It's not, it's not up to me if I just want to use it or don't want to use it. No, I have to use it or else you're going to barely be fishing and trying to just barely make a check and have a good tournament if you just come in the top 50 without it. So when we go up there, or wherever, to whatever lake it is, where it's dominated with it, you, you don't have a choice being a professional angler that is tied to the results for my next year sponsorships, uh, the check that I get in the tournaments, which is, you know, not <clears throat> the biggest goal as a professional bass fisherman. You're not really living check to check as far as tournament checks. You know, it's more about sponsors, but the better that you do in a year, Obviously, the more opportunities you have a sponsor. That's just how it goes. So for me, I have absolutely no choice when I go up there or wherever. I have to use it. There's no other option. Now, that being said, if you want to talk about Bass Master being a brand and trying to have increased viewership, they're trying to get as many people to watch their program as they possibly can. And when they do that, they get to have sponsors of their own and stuff like that too. So for them, do I think it's good for viewership to have everybody in the top 10 trolling around, staring down, looking at their screen, catching a fish? You know, even when you catch a fish, it's a lot of times on a spinning rod. It's not quite as exciting. Now, I am from Alabama. I'm from the heart of power fishing in the South. So for me, what gets my blood boiling is shaking that rod with a swim jig, skipping a frog under a bush, throwing a frog up on a grass mat, flipping in heavy cover, sitting the hook, Watching, you know, people fish like that, to me, is a lot more fun. Gets my blood pumping a lot more. When I see people trolling around, oh, there's one. Throw there to it. They lean, set the hook, drag starts peeling. Two and a half minutes later, the fish is at the boat. They get it, weigh it. They're like, oh, this is a, you know, four and three quarter pounder. We had no idea. On the screen, you can tell it's a better than average one, but you don't know if it's a four and a quarter or a five and three quarters. It's hard to tell. So for viewership, yeah, I think it's bad for the person that's watching to see people use forward-facing sonar. Now, on the other hand of that, I'm talking about casual viewers. The hardcore fishermen that want to watch bass fishing to learn and improve, they already have forward-facing sonar, and they want to see what kind of little tricks we have to you know, make the fish bite, to find the fish, how the fish react to our bait, that type of stuff. The hardcore bass fisherman that wants to get better they probably want to see it. They probably are like, okay, this is going to be a good chunk of my fishing time. This is what I need to work on. This is what I need to be watching. But the casual viewer who just wants to watch bass fishing because it's kind of exciting and is not really that worried about getting better at bass fishing, I can't imagine they like to see it. I know I don't. I had never watched a smallmouth bass tournament in my entire life until I made the Elite Series. And I haven't watched many since, to tell you the truth. Like, I would rather watch guys flipping down the bank on Sabine catching pound and a half fish than, than you know, watching people use forward face and sonar and catch them on a spin rod. Now that's just me. That's my passion for bass fishing is power fishing. I get it. I have worked really hard to get better at forward face and sonar and now I feel like I'm, you know, at least pretty good with it. So for me now, I feel like I'm kind of catching on you know i'm decent with it now so not for my own personal gain and am i saying that we need to get rid of it i mean i just caught 25 10 27 12 and then 25 15 and then another 20 pound bag on day four with a short time using it every fish that i've caught in the past three tournaments st Clair, champlain and st lawrence river every single bass i've weighed in has been one that i saw first before i cast it to it now that's me though being the guy who is casting and reeling the fish in. Still fun when you're the guy casting. I don't imagine it's very fun when you're the guy watching someone cast. Because I've been out there on a boat with guys and 
we're throwing a frog, you know, and they catch one and I'm jacked up, you know, they skip up there, set the hook, I'm pumped up too, you know, and I've been on the boat with guys who were, you know, forward facing sonaring and they throw out there and they catch one and I'm just kind of looking at the screen like, where's me one? You know, it's not, it's just not the same to me. But like I said, I'm from Alabama and I just think there's three different angles to it. There's an angle to it when you're the guy doing it and you're competing, you have to have it. And then there's a guy who is trying to improve at it, trying to learn at it, and he wants to see how the pros do it. Yeah, and he like wants to watch it. They are, if they, ah. because like, okay, you can see some guys, some guys throw a drop shot out there in front of a small mouth, okay? Some guys hold their line tight, okay? Your bait's on the bottom, some guys hold their line tight. Got your bait up off the bottom, holding it, not moving it. Some guys are shaking it, you know, shaking it a lot in front of the fish. And you know when a guy's doing that, there's a fish looking at his bait. Some guys are doing that. Some guys are, you know, letting it lay slack on the bottom, completely slack on the bottom. So you can see how everybody's doing stuff differently if you're trying to learn. And you can see how guys go from a, you know, two and a half inch worm to a three and a half inch worm, maybe even a four inch worm, change colors, change profiles, all this type of stuff to try to trigger the fish and go from a drop shot to a Ned rig you know all this different type of stuff you can see how people you know try to trigger the fish if you're trying to so there's a window of guys who are trying to learn and i think for the casual viewers i just don't see how that's what they want to watch so there's three different angles here and i understand it from all three and i don't know what's the proper thing to do do you have a solution for live to be better i believe that if you've got, you know, six, six cameras, right? You give six cameras to six anglers on day one and all six of them are trolling down the bank, you know, using forward facing sonar, I think it's boring to watch. I think that if you have six cameras and we're on Okeechobee and four of them are flipping reeds, one of them's throwing a frog in pads, one of them's, you know, winding a vibrating jig over out offshore eelgrass, you got a little bit of diversity there and you've got visual stimulation from the structure they're fishing. You can see somebody flipping in a reed clump. You can see a blown in high and mat, somebody flip into it. You can see them fishing like that. So you're like, man, there ought to be one right there, and you're watching. But whenever they're using Ford Fax Sonar, you don't get that same thing. So in my opinion, I feel like we have to change the way that we are covering anglers on the water with forward facing sonar. The, the live show that works whenever we are fishing visual cover and stuff like that, that's a live show that works because of how much stuff is going on in the background. You can see everything. When you're going to a forward facing sonar tournament, I think we have to change the way that we are doing live coverage. Not, nothing to do with the commentators, nothing to do with anything like that. It's just to do with how interesting, interesting the, you know, stuff on the screen is. And I, that's just my opinion. I could be dead wrong. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Do y'all like watching people that just are using forward face of sonar and trolling around and catching one every now and then? Like, if, if that's what you like and, and you want to see, that's fine. You know, we need to keep doing exactly what we're doing. But if the general public does not like watching that as much as they do like watching someone work down a bank meticulously we have to change kind of the way that we're doing live and i don't have a solution for it yet but it definitely if we're going to be using forward facing sonar we need to have more of the anglers where you can see the screen they're watching we need to have more big storylines stuff like that like if there's drama going on in the tournament stuff like that that's the stuff that's fun to watch and everybody wants to see so Definitely have to get some fresh new ideas for the live stream. I believe if it's going to be a forward-facing sonar tournament, I think we have to all work and brainstorm to make that show interesting because at the end of the day, I'm a competitive fisherman. My number one goal is I want to compete in the tournament to do the best I can. But the reason we get sponsors and basket sponsors and the live show does so well is because Part of this is entertaining to the public and the public wants to follow it and they want to be involved in it and see it and watch it and if we lose the entertainment part of the entertainment factor you have to adapt and make it entertaining again and i think that's where we are right now is we're kind of at a little bit of a 
it's a little stale the as far as entertainment goes and the forward facing sonar tournaments it's a, a little bit stale and i think it's on us as an organization to figure out how to ramp up the entertainment level i think it just it started really fast like there wasn't any time to adapt to it yeah i mean it, it's very very difficult so bassmaster obviously major major size production you know to stream all this stuff to have six or ten cameramen you know at the tournaments in boats with people we got bass track going we got live updates on the water going you know camera boats out there it's a huge organization that's going into this tournaments it's not like at the drop of a hat they can just like change everything they've been doing for 20 years it's going to take time and it's going to take fresh new ideas and i think that's what we need i think we need to freshen up the live coverage whenever we're in those tournaments that are dominated by and look i don't think it's forward facing sonar's fault if you think back five years ago people were still fishing for and i'm gonna say smallmouth because that's the ones that's the most susceptible to being caught with forward facing sonar it's always been where people are looking at the graph on 2d on whatever and they're dropping straight down you know pitching behind the boat a little bit pitching out in front of the boat a little bit but just you're so focused in on your electronics and it's been like that forever forever it's been straight focused in on your electronics whenever you do that i feel like it's been like that forever i've always felt like the smallmouth tournaments were a little bit less entertaining and i think we need to change kind of the way that we do it that's my personal opinion all right burning question mm -hmm. do you think you would have won aoi without forward facing sonar me without it or the whole field without it me without it no chance if i'm the only one without it and they've all got it there's no chance i want to AOI. but if the whole field does not have it i think there would still be a a shot not as good of a shot but there would still be a, a chance you know shouldn't it be all even though yeah yeah, yeah. Whether you have it or not. well well i mean if you fish on the bass masters and you don't have it you're at a huge disadvantage so it should 100 percent be all even either everyone has to have it or no one has to have it because if you come into it i mean if you're john cox and you're as good as he is at fishing shallow you don't have to have it but you're going to have a few tournaments a year where it's going to be a major grind for you and it's not going to be a major grind for a lot of the field so you're going to be just fighting and clawing and scratching and doing everything that you can possibly do to have the just a miracle couple of days and you got other people that are thrown in front of fish all day long so you have to be exceptionally good to compete without it and you're not going to compete for a win in every single tournament without it you just can't there's some tournaments where it's too big of a hurdle so at this point do you believe you're at a disadvantage without it Oh, well, if the field didn't have it, if the field did not have it, I feel like I would be at a advantage in some tournaments and a major disadvantage in other tournaments. Because you've got people like the Johnstons, Brandon Polinick, Austin Felix, a lot of the Seth Fighter, guys who have been really good smallmouth fishermen for a long, long time. And with the you know forward facing sonar coming out what it has done is it's took the guys who are you know like just say me for example i'm still not near as good of a smallmouth fisherman as those guys but i have spent so much time working on how to catch them how to trigger them how to find them using that sonar that if we take it away they still have their lifetime worth of experiences to draw from and all I have is a system that I have developed around this electronic. So if they take it away, my system that I have used for the past two years to catch smallmouth is gone. I have to develop an entire new system when they have years of stuff to draw from. So I would be at a major, major disadvantage whenever you go to lakes where people have local knowledge or they have history on catching smallmouth, stuff like that. But at other tournaments, I'd be at, at an advantage over some people, you know? So it would go it would go both ways. And I'm just, I know that I don't have the experience and the history to draw from on smallmouth fishing without it. Because for me, I don't like sitting still. 
and if you don't have it and you're fishing those flats and stuff for smallmouth it'd be a lot more a lot more difficult to have confidence that you're around them without it so i would be at a at a disadvantage without it in a chunk of the tournaments do you think there's a way that they could create a schedule that would not include forward facing sonar and like don't have a rule that it's taken away but they could create a schedule which would not come into play there's not one. I, I don't see it being possible we went to okeechobee this year and it was one on forward face sonar we went to seminole this year it was one on forward facing sonar i mean i just murray all of them it don't matter if the fish are spawning or not santee dude it's just it's that's what's going to happen it just makes you that much more efficient of an angler now the online consensus is that when you buy it fish jump in the boat i have fished with mine on for a while now and have not had one jump in the boat yet i'm optimistic that maybe next year's the year that they're going to jump in the boat because people seem to think that they jump in the boat when you have one and i have not seen it but Maybe all the fish that have not jumped in the boat will jump in the boat next year in a tournament and they'll just turn my graph on and they'll just start jumping out of the water like, you know, them carp do. So I'm still optimistic, but it, it's not, my point to that is, it's not a tool that makes you catch every single fish. I fish for smallmouth, 10% of them bite, maybe. Maybe it's, you know, if you get in a really, really good area with really good timing, you can get your percentage up to 20% maybe, and that's whenever you're just like, everything's going right. But most of the fish do not bite. All it does is you know that you're throwing in front of them a lot more often. So that's the, that's the biggest key is using it to throw in front of fish. And that's why no matter the schedule, you can't get away from it if it's allowed, which it is allowed. So, I mean, you can't beat somebody. Like it doesn't matter how good you are at throwing a frog or throwing a swim jig or whatever you're doing flipping. You're not throwing in front of a bass every single cast. And when people are using forward-facing sonar, they're just throwing in front of bass more often than you do on the bank. It's just the fact of the matter. Now, some lakes we go to, the big ones like to live shallow. Some lakes we go to, the big ones like to live mid-depth. Some lakes, they like to get off really deep. So it's not gonna win every single tournament because sometimes, you know, you can punch mats and catch a better average quality fish. And if you get 10 or 12 bites in a day, you have a really big bag. Whereas you can get offshore in the outside edge of grass and stuff and catch them, and it's just not the same as quite as good of quality. Now, some lakes is like that, some lakes it's not. Sometimes, so, sometimes of years like that, sometimes of years not. So, yeah, there's nothing you can do for a schedule to make it not play. It's gonna play, and it's here. What else? Do you think you've lost any of your? shallow skills like dock skipping or frogging since you've been spending so much time no but i have lost some of my abilities as far as skipping casting flipping i'm not quite as good as i was a few years ago but it's not because of that it's because of we go to lakes a lot where that's not a player you know it's just not a player so I haven't, I don't know if I have skipped docks for a pattern on the elites yet. I don't know that I have. You know, I, if I have, I don't, it don't, doesn't. I did do it there. Yep, I did do it there my rookie year. But, you know, it's only been a handful of times or two times maybe on the elites that I have, you know, skip docks or skipped a frog or cast a frog it's just the skip we go places at least for the past two or three years we have went to places while they're spawning a lot and then when they're goofy a lot so it's really been more power finesse techniques for the past few years that's just what it's had to be you know when we go to florida in february they're not really biting it's probably one of the worst times of year to go to florida you know, so we go down there whenever there's a cold front, some of them are spawning, most of them ain't, they're acting weird. You just don't get to fish like that. You know, we, we go to Murray, some are spawning, some are on the herring spawn, they're just real scattered out, very inconsistent way to fish. You just can't fish like that, like you just can't. So yeah, as far as, you know, 
skipping and stuff I have definitely lost it a little but I have not lost it all the way but it's been mostly because of our schedule and the lakes that we've been fishing what do you think you think I've lost it No. you think I'm still dialed yeah yeah do you think you think about practice differently since forward facing sonar has come into play oh definitely definitely yeah you think about practice a lot differently because you can just pull up and see if they're there or not you know you can be so much more efficient so much faster stay on the juice better you definitely have to practice a little bit better you know a little bit different anyways <clears throat> Do you think the rookies are going to come in next year and dominate like they did this year? That is possible. Do you think it's because the rookies believe in forward facing sonar and some of the people that are been there 20 or 15 years don't believe in it as much? Yeah, that's definitely what happened. Um, you know, forward facing sonar won. I will say the rookies did not dominate though because my boy came out. <laughs> so they did really good though. They did, really, they did good. really, really good. The rookies did exceptionally well and this year. It was year. all forward-facing Yeah, well, Will Davis, I don't think, won with it. He might have used it for some, What's but up? lay. He didn't win with it. But other than that, it's been completely dominated by forward-facing sonar as far as the rookies go. And that's how it's going to be. Every rookie that comes in from the opens from now on is going to be, you know, super, super good with it. So it's on us to make sure they're not better than us with it, you know? And I... I used it a lot. I didn't commit to it in some tournaments, and some tournaments I did. So, I mean, it's up to us to make sure them rookies don't come in and do us like that no more. Because we gotta, we gotta get some of the wins next year. Do you think it makes the wins more lucky because you just kind of have to land on the fish? I don't think so. I mean, when you go to a place like St. Clair, I feel like it's just gonna be a little bit of luck involved. You know, as far as the win, because 20 pounds is not that easy to catch. It looked like it was. 20 is not that easy to catch. 22 or 23, you're getting to where it's tough. Like, it takes a good, good day to catch 22 or 23. So, I mean, man, you can have a day where you fish through a really, really good area, catch 21 pounds. And then you can have a day where you fish through a mediocre area and you catch the two biggest ones through there. But that's kind of how it is everywhere. You know, it's just like St. Clair is one of those lakes where it get where they're really, really, really weird. Champlain was not. There was certain class of fish in certain schools that were big. And, you know, people found that good quality in practice and then leaned on them. And St. Clair was the same way. You get in an area where you know there's four pluses you know, the occasional five, and then you're in a really, really good area. But to catch that much weight for four days is, is very, very difficult. Champlain, I feel like, was a little bit more about what you found in practice, and St. Clair was a little bit more about getting a couple of those five-pound bites a day, which are just kind of random and roaming around, which is tough. So, yeah, I'd say I don't think forward-face sonar is more luck, but there are certain lakes where the luck factor is a little bit more. Do you think coming into the elites from the opens you have to have it? I don't know if you can make it to the opens now without it. I mean, you could, you definitely could, but I think you'd be at a big disadvantage without it fishing in the opens. Can you think of a time of a year and a lake where it would not come into play? There ain't one now. There's absolutely not one now. It's all year. 365. And 366 on a leap year. It's guaranteed. So, what would you like to see on live? If you were, if you were not on the elites, what would you like to watch? I like watching people like Hackney flip. You know, people, you know, shallow cranking that kind of stuff, where they're making a lot of casts and firing. Or y'all, y'all know how it used to be when Jimmy Houston was firing a spinner bait up there beside cover and just slow rolling it or burning it or stuff like that, like. It's just different. It's just different. When you see somebody cast to a piece of cover and fish their bait through it, it's, it's like you just feel it coming. You know, like you know, you feel like, man, they, they should get a bite right here, you know? So that's what I like to see. I like seeing people fish visual cover. To me, that's it. If I'm a viewer, that's what I want to watch. If I'm watching people's, you know, I watch other people's YouTube videos and stuff. If they're fishing on St. Clair, I'm probably not going to watch it. I'm just not. 
if they're flipping the bank on Sabine, I'll probably watch it. I probably will. If they're throwing a buzz bait around somewhere, I'll probably watch it, you know, but it's just, that's what I like seeing. I like seeing people fish cover because to me, it's very visually stimulating whenever you're watching. It seems like when you catch fish, it is a different reaction also because just editing your St. Clair footage and your Champlain footage, you aren't as excited as you were catching Sabine bass. Yeah, and the Sabine bass are a third time, of the size. Yeah. yeah. That's just true for me. You know, I <clears throat> throw out there and I see them. I watch them come eat my bait or whatever. And it's just, it's not as fun. You know, like there's there's times where your heart gets beating fast. You get jacked up. You know, like, you know, you see one come up, a big one come up and jump or whatever. And you know, it, this is going to help me in the tournament. So it gets me excited because I'm in a tournament. But like as far as fun and i'm not trying to just like bash smallmouth fishing because it is i like it i really do like it i like fishing tournaments like that like i like it just to me it's not quite as fun you know to catch them like that like fun fishing what's fun whenever you're fishing for me is is different so i, I do get a lot more excited and have a lot more fun in the tournaments that are you know you're throwing at cover or you're or you're catching them with with you know setting the hook hard and stuff like that to me it's more fun. It's what I grew up doing, though. Is there a way to ban it in the elites? No. There's... I don't believe there is any way to ban it in the elites. Would you like for it to be banned in the elites? If we got to vote on the schedule, I'd say, yes, yeah, it'd be fine to ban it. Would I like for it to be banned? I don't think so. Because if we go up to St. Clair and we can't use it and the locals can use it, the lakes are going to be heavily pressured the fish are going to be highly educated and then we're going to be very inefficient so i feel like it'd be very difficult for us to fish a lot of the lakes that we've been fishing without it so for me if they're going to schedule it with okeechobee seminole sabines lay lakes those types of tournaments yeah i'm fine with it you can ban it or not i don't care but if we're going to go to lakes where it is the most powerful entity I don't think you should ban it. I think that's all I have. So you got? Ask them what do they want to see. So leave me some comments down below. What do you, what is the most entertaining for y'all to watch on YouTube or not YouTube? Bassmaster Live, other you know the or YouTube BPT okay. Live. What do you like seeing? What kind of ideas do you have for live? What what do y'all? How do y'all like seeing people fish? Because Y'all are who matters. Like, we're trying to cater to the viewer. That's what we're all trying to do. As far as YouTube goes, Bassmaster Live, everything that we do is trying to cater to the viewer because y'all are a part of the sport, the biggest part of the sport. So, y'all need to be entertained and enjoy what y'all are seeing and watching. So, let me know what do y'all like seeing? Do y'all like it? Do y'all feel like I'm just up here being an absolute hater for smallmouth and forward facing sonar, which I'm not because my best two finishes. My best finish this year was with it for smallmouth, and my best finish last year was with it for smallmouth. So I'm not just being a hater. I'm just telling you what I like to see, personally, when I'm just at home trying to be entertained and watch fishing. So leave me some comments. Let me know. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, tell me you want angler of the year. You tell him. Kyle won angler of the year. Show did.